then suddenly there came on her the change which in tremendous moments of our life can overtake sometimes the human soul and hold it up to all this luminous soul. The veil is gone, the seeker is no more, only the spirit sees and all he knows. Then a calm power seated about our world is seen and shaken by our soul and deep. Its stillness bears the voices of the world. Immobile, it moves nature, looks on life. This, in a moment's death, was born in her. Like one who looks up to far heights, she saw ancient and strong as on a wind. Summit above her where she had worked in her lone mind, laboring apart in a soul tower of self. The source of all which she had seen or hoped, that mightness assumed a symbol form. Her being spaces quivered with its touch. It covered her as with the immortal wings. All in her mated with that mighty hour, as if the last remnant had been slain by death of the humanity that once was hers. A moment yet, she lingered motionless and looked down on the dead man at her feet. Then, like a tree recovering from a wind, she raised her noble head, fronting her gaze. Something stood there, an earthly, somber, grand, a limitless denial of all being that was the terror and wonder of a soul. The two opposed each other with their heights, woman and universal God. Around her, piling their void and bearable loneliness upon her mighty and companion soul, many 
in human solitude came close. The dim and awful Godhead holds erect from his brief stooping to his touch on earth. And like a dream that wakes out of a dream, forsaking the poor mold of that dead clay, another luminous subjavan rose, starting upright from the recumbent earth, as if Someone over viewless border steps, emerging on the edge of the unseen world. Between two limbs, he stood, not wavering, but fixed in quiet, strong expectancy. Like one who sightless listens for a command, so were they immobile on that earthly field, powers not of earth, though one in human clay. Luminous, he moved away, behind him, death. Into the deep and unfamiliar air, Enormous, windless, without stir or sound. They seem to enlarge away, drawn by some wide, pale distance from the warm control of earth. And her grown Ah, oh, now, now they would escape. Then, flaming from her body's nest, alarmed, her violent spirit soared at Satyava. Enigma of the unconscious sculptural sleep. Symbols of the approach to darkness old, and monuments of her titanic reign. Heavy line arrived where his feet touched the shadowy marches brink. Turning arrested, luminous Satyavan looked back with his wonderful eyes at Savitri. But death Peeled forth his vast abysmal cry. O mortal, turn back to thy transient life. Aspire not to accompany death to his home, as if thy breath could live 
where time must die. Still, like a statue on its pedestal, lone in the silence and to vastness bare. Against midnight's dumb abysses piled in front, a columned shaft of fire and light. 